Let's take a look at a real life application problem dealing with linear functions. Here, here it says we've got sales tax for a certain store is set at 7%, 7% sales tax. And we want to write a function, this is going to be a linear function, write a function representing the total cost. We're going to call it capital T of X. And quick little side note, not all functions have to be written as F of X. You can have G of X or H of X or in our case T of X. Uh, the total cost for a purchase that cost X dollars before tax. So what we want is we want our function to be able to take our, our price of um, you know whatever we're buying, t-shirts or pants or something like that, and compute the sales tax and add it on and give me the total cost after tax. That's what our function is going to do. It's going to take our input value and change it to an output value that represents the total cost. So let's just let's think about it. All right. So what what would this function need to do? The total cost if we were going to buy some shirts and pants or whatnot that cost X dollars would be uh, it would need to to take the price of those shirts and pants and add on on top of that the sales tax. Now what what is the sales tax on shirts and pants that cost a, a total of X number of dollars? Well, the sales tax was 7%, so we're going to put 0 0.07 of the purchase price, so times X. Not just 0 0.07, but 7% of the total cost of the shirt and the pants and whatnot. So this part here, this part here will be the tax. Um, this part here will be the original cost. And then when you add them together, you're adding the tax on, basically. Now, one nice thing that I noticed is that the X and the 0.07X, those are like terms. They, they both have an X raised to the first power. So you can combine the like terms to get 1.07X. And so this would be a function, and it's a linear function, that represents the total cost after tax of a purchase of X number of dollars. Now, why, why is this a linear function though, just to be clear? Well, let, let's take a look. Uh, do you notice how T of X is really M X plus B? Now you say, well, well, Devin, it doesn't have a B. Well, you can think of the B as being zero and the M would be 1.07. So it is a linear function. If, if you graph this linear function, it would be a straight line. It would be a straight line with a slope of 1.07. Alright, now what would we use this for? Well, I actually have a part B that I want to do as well. So this is continued on, on the next page here. Uh, the, the next question says, what is the final total, the final price that we have to pay after tax if we buy a shirt for $29? Right, and as a reminder, the T of X from the previous page was 1.07X. So if you want to find the total price of a shirt after tax where the shirt cost $29, basically what you're asking for is T of 29. So this is the total price of buying something for $29. So we'll take 1.07 times 29 and we can just do that in our calculator real quick. 1.07 times 29. We get a total of 31.03. And that makes perfectly good sense. $31.03. So a shirt that costs $29 after tax, assuming tax is 7%, would be $31.03. And so we see how helpful this linear function can be. We can find T of anything. You give me the total price of the items you're going to purchase, plug it in the function, and we have our total price after tax.